Hey everybody and welcome back to Interrogation You Will Be Deceived. Let's go ahead and jump right back in and cross our fingers that we don't have quite as much trouble as we had this past few times. When they say challenge mode, they, they really mean challenge mode. Alright, what do we got? Remind me. Oh yeah, there's a uh, hostage situation in the in the vet's office. After being approached by our officers, Cassandra Higgs and Lucas Romano, they were a couple of uh, of suspects uh, suspected to be in the, the terrorist liberation front group. Um, they entered a vehicle and proceeded to speed away, resisting arrest. The officers pursued and roadblocks were established. After a 10 minute chase, the suspects crashed into a lamppost, rendering their vehicle unusable. Before our agents could initiate communicators or attempt to subdue them, these suspects rushed into a nearby veterinary clinic. At the moment, the suspects have barricaded the clinic's exits. We know of at least one we know at least one of them is armed. Phone communication has been established with one of the suspects, Cassandra Higgs. She is yet to make demands, although she claims they hold two hostages. At the lead agent as the lead agent of the Liberation Front Task Force, you've been asked to take over the negotiations. Our prime objective um, is to not interfere with sentient uh, civilizations, but really our prime objective is the safe extraction of the two hostages, with the secondary objective being the surrender of the two suspects. Headquarters has informed us that if we fail to negotiate a peaceful resolution, they have a SWAT team on hold and ready to move in when time runs out. Okay, so it is a timed mission. And I'm assuming that time running out and the SWAT team going in is a, is a fail, failure condition. Um, here we have Cassandra Higgs, 26 years old. Charges conspiracy to commit terrorism and illegal hostage taking. Uh, Cassandra Higgs is currently employed at a company that offers consultation and logistical support to various labor unions. She's been fined multiple times for undeclared protests, staging unsanctioned city marches, as well as breaches of non-disclosure agreements. Higgs is a graduate of City University with a master's degree in political sciences. She's also volunteered for several NGOs, ranging from community soup kitchens to programs that provide education for children in difficult social situations. Though her online, or through her online social profiles, we have identified Amatis Garcia as her romantic interest. We have reached out to him, and he has agreed to assist us. He is on his way, and will be available for questioning once he arrives. And then the other hostage taker, one Lucas Romano, age 28, uh, charged with the same things. Lucas Romano was a young student at City University, having been expelled after several harassment, loitering, and trespassing charges, which resulted from Romano and a few others trying to disrupt the events of some local politicians. He is a known member of several extreme left political and activist groups. He's also the son of Matteo Romano, a wealthy and popular land developer whose investments in the city have been very successful. Okay. And, uh... Okay, so... This is Amatis Garcia, 26-year-old. He's the love interest of Cassandra. Amatis Garcia is the identified life partner of Cassandra Higgs, according to their online social profiles. He is an embedded systems programmer and a mountain climbing enthusiast. He's being brought in for questioning. All right, that's it. Patch Higgs through, then. Okay, it's not timed. Not yet, at least. She's very calm, not very accepting. I don't know how we can tell her uh, pupil aperture when it's a phone call, but whatever. We have Cassandra Higgs on the telephone. Cassandra, let's let the nice veterinarians go, okay? They haven't done anything wrong. Cassandra, let's talk. Let's see how we can make sure nobody dies today. Let's let's maybe not talk about dying. You need to give turn yourself in. Get a fair trial. Give up now before you make things any worse for yourself, or what you're doing is making the Liberation Front look weak. Let's resolve this. It's probably not the best option. Um, let's go for the first one. Let's let's let the veterinarians go. They haven't done anything wrong, Cassandra. Oh, we've started the timer. Five minutes. The feminine voice sounds sharp and angry. Fuck you. 
they're a willing part of the system, spending thousands on fucking critters while people die of hunger. You have exactly four minutes, I, I seem to have five, Cassandra, to clear the street in front of this police, or some, in front of this place, land a piloted helicopter in front of it with half a million unmarked bills inside. I'm putting this shit on stopwatch, so don't fuck with me. It r runs out, people die. TikTok, bitch. All right. Why is Liberation Front worth what you're doing, Cassandra? Cassandra, this is not like you. She's going to say, you don't know me. I know it. I know she's going to say that. Please put Mr. Romano on the phone. Do you need anything in there? We need more time to get you what you want, Cassandra. I need you to release the hostages, Cassandra. I need you to turn yourself in. Um, why is the Liberation Front worth doing what you're doing, Cassandra? What do you fucking know about the Front? This is not in line with the Front's objectives. This is not what the Front believes in. There's a better way to do this, Cassandra. I know full well what the Liberation Front stands for. Well, I don't really know what their objectives and what they believe in. Honestly, I, I don't. Um, it seems like they believe in blowing shit up. So, maybe this is in line with what they want to do. There's a better way to do this, Cassandra. Oh, really? Stupid me. Never thought about it. The Liberation Front will see you as a liability after a stunt like this. You'll be able to speak out from prison, advance your ideas peacefully after you did your time. Um, Liberation Front will see you as a liability. I don't think she's going to really believe that one. Yeah, and get a sweet husband. Have a few kids. Nice house in the suburbs. Fuck off. Give me that fucking chopper, you shitwad. All right. Let's, let's let's back up. Um, do you need anything in there? She's gonna say, "I need my fucking chopper." Need need what? I told you what I need already. Food, maybe some pizza, blankets in case you're cold. Cold. Anything you need transmitted to your families. Um, anything, any choice words you want added to your obituary. Anything you want your family to know. Thanks, believe our family's the fuck out of this. Alright. Please put Mr. Romano on the phone. I want to speak with him for a second. No. Cassandra, we're going to need more time to get you what you want, Cassandra. What the fuck do you need more time for? We're having trouble convincing City Hall to spend the money. I need more time. We're having trouble getting a chopper from another city. Ours is broken. We're having trouble reaching a judge to approve all this. We're having trouble convincing a pilot to give themselves up as a hostage. Oh, we added more time. We did get more time. Okay. Look. Tell him they'll be fine. I've got nothing against the guy. He'll be going home after I'm dropping off. You get three more minutes. Explain it to him. Alright. Um. I need you to release the hostages, Cassandra. These people are the only thing preventing you from murdering me. Um. How are the hostages doing? They're fine and fucking dandy. And they will remain so as long as you get my damn demands on time. You need to just give us at least one hostage, Cassandra, so we know what we're dealing with. We know that you are on the up and up. Now, now, I can't trust you not to get state-sanctioned psycho after I do. Alright, that didn't work. Cassandra, this is not like you. Oh, and what am I like? There we go. Okay, Amatis Garcia is here. We can we can jump to him real quick. Um, you're an intelligent woman with an MA in political sciences. You're not a terrorist. You volunteer to help girls in marginalized communities, not to put guns to those com those communities' heads. You're a rebellious soul who wants to make a change. I mean, she does say that she works at soup kitchens and, and different. Um, with children in difficult situations. So, you you volunteer to help girls. You don't do this. You manipulative shit. You're just carrying out some orders in the scheme. You were never supposed to be in, have any responsibility in their plan. You're just carrying out orders in the scheme. You were never supposed to die for their plan. You're right. I don't know who you are. I just want those civilians safe. No, let's let's not drop it. Um, you weren't you weren't supposed to be doing this, Cassandra. Oh, that seemed like it may have dropped it in a little bit. Fuck you, I'm not some pawn. All right, let's let's jump to Amadis Garcia here. Thank you for coming, Mr. Garcia. I'm afraid Miss Miss Higgs is in a very dangerous dangerous situation. 
So Amadis, were you aware that your girlfriend's a psychotic terrorist? Yeah, so Amadis, you need to help me prevent your girlfriend from getting gunned down by a SWAT team. Okay, thank you for coming, Mr. Garcia. Ooh, he can't tell. He maybe didn't like that. I'll, uh, they told me what was going on before I came in. I'll try my best to help. How was it? What did we do to the other? What did we do to the lady? We're like, uh, just hold on. Hold, please. And then are we playing some kind of, like, Muzak in her, in her ear? Um, how much do you know about her dealings with the Liberation Front? Or let's ask, are you involved with the Liberation Front? Huh? No. Why would I be if I was here? Maybe you're here to back up your terrorist girlfriend. Maybe you're ready to turn yourself in. Maybe the Liber Liberation Front forced you. Oh, he really opened up there. Uh, no, that's absurd, but maybe that's what they did to Cassandra. Um, what's, how's your relationship? They seem saddened and reluctant. Good, I thought. Did she seem content? She can't have been too emotionally available if she has had some kind of terrorist coordination to do behind your back. Were you two happy together? I know this is a difficult time. Your relationship is also important to Cassandra and thus to me. Have you made up your mind where you, where do you see it going from now on? Kind of a weird question, but whatever. I don't know yet. I'm still considering all of this. All right. Did she seem content? How, how did she feel? I guess not. I guess she wasn't really there, and I missed. I missed that. Okay. So how do you feel? Well, hurt. I mean, so much has been hidden from me. So you say she wasn't very emotionally available. Were you too happy together? Um, were you too happy? Very much so, which is what makes this whole situation seem even more shocking. All right, um, how much did you know about her dealings with the Liberation Front? I had no idea. I knew she was into politics and all that, but nothing like this. Did you ever, you and her ever talk about the Front? Now that you mention it, she did say she thought their outrage was justified, but she said that sort of thing a lot. I didn't make much of it. She's in there with an Lucas Romano, probably the other boyfriend, you know him? Um, she's in there with a Lucas Romano, probably assigned to her by the front. Do you know him? I don't know. I, do, I know her, though. I know her, though. I assume she kept me away from all this to protect me. Um, she had extreme political views. She labels herself as a revolutionary. Well, so does a modest, right? No, we don't know his deal. Yes, absolutely, but that fire of justice for justice is part of what I fell in love with, you know? Big oversight, huh? We're at 550. Big oversight, huh? That extremist views can lead to extremist actions. You couldn't have known that she'd be willing to hurt innocents for her views. There we go. See, he's, he's fully opening up now. I'm still not sure that she is. Did, did you notice there are any ever spending time with anyone suspicious? She had a lot of these extremist friends. Stalinist community, or communists, Antifa dudes, that sort. And you weren't worried about her spending time around all these men as a boyfriend? And you didn't think it would be a question of time before they used her for their cause? And you don't hold them responsible for the situation she's in now? Um, you didn't think she was going to get caught up in all this garbage? Yeah, maybe I should have been considering that. Can you try to remember more specifically who she interacted with? No, I can't remember. Alright, so there's not... I'm just going to run out of time if I keep going back and forth. So let's jump back to her. Miss Hicks, I have someone here with me, Cassandra. There's no immediate response. I have Amadis here with me. Fuck you, you scum <laughs> scuzzball. How dare you try to use him against me? I really think you'd like to know what Amadis has to say. I'm trying to use him against me like this. This is bullshit. Um, do I need to charge him with conspiracy? I, I know he has nothing to do with this, but you have to realize your actions affect him. Fine, go ahead. He's very worried about you. He's very hurt that you kept so much of your real life from him. I'm telling him I'm sorry, but I had to do this. He's very worried about you. Yeah, well, no shit. Alright. He has something he wants me to tell you. Well, that's what we just talked about. Let's jump back to him. Um, do you, how do you feel about all this? Where do you see a relationship going? I do love her and, and so I'll, I'll have her back. Probably. He wants you to know that he'll be there for you. He just wants you to get out of there alive. 
Ah, uh, ah, uh, tell him I'm trying. All right. I need you to release the hostages, Cassandra. You need to give us at least one hostage. Tab soon reports that the released hostage is being brought in. Fine, fine. I'm fucking sending out the girl. I'm keeping the guy. Clock still ticking. Is, is the hostage still okay? How's he doing in there? He's fine and fucking dandy. You know, remain so. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, I need to get that. Uh, I need to get that hostage. Some information from him, maybe. I'll ask you again, please put Mr. Romano on the phone. Fuck off, you're talking to me or you're talking to no one. Alright. I need you to turn yourself in, Cassandra. And I need a fair fucking system for human beings, and it's sometimes tough to get what we want. This won't change the system, Cassandra. The chopper's probably not coming, Cassandra. Staying in there longer just worsens your case while advancing it in no way. At least send out Mr. Romano. You've got nothing in there, Cassandra. Turn in. Um. This won't change the system, Cassandra. Oh, that really opened her up. Even if it doesn't, I still have to get myself to safety from you, psychos. You know how it is. At least send out Mr. Romano. Hell no. You've got nothing in there, Cassandra. Turn in. Lucas and I still have this guy. Chopper's probably not coming, Cassandra. God damn it. At least you're honest about it. Still no dice. Well, she's fully open. I need you to release the hostage, Cassandra. Hell no. Only way this man's coming out is when I get in my motherfucking chopper. Do you have anything else we could say about this, dude? Anything? Please put Mr. Romano on the phone, Cassandra. Why, you bored with me already? Fuck no. Okay. I need you to release the hostages. We were just there. Um, we need more time. Why is the Liberation Front worth doing this? Um, this is not in line with the Front's objectives. This is not what the Front believes in. This is probably not a good idea. You have no idea what we believe in, Copper. Taking hostages and demanding money seems against the Front's ideas. I don't think they'll have your back. Hiding behind civilians undermines their message of courageous revolution. Oh yeah, there we go. Fuck off, give me my chopper. She's really, she's really invested in this now. Okay, let's just... Okay, here we got... Who's, who's Sylvia Loken? Who's Sylvia Loken? She's the, uh, she's the vet. Sylvia, thank you for coming, Miss Loken. Are you okay? Thank you for coming, Miss Loken. We need your help. Thank you for coming, Miss Loken. Your colleague is in danger. Um, are you okay? Mm-hmm. Thank you for asking. It's a miracle you made it out. Hopefully SWAT team can take those bastards before they harm the other hostage. We're getting through to these people that held you. I think we can reason with them. The people in there are just misguided kids, manipulated ideologues. They are in way over their heads. I'm glad you're alive. The people in there are committed terrorists, ready to kill for their cause. Your colleague is as good as dead, I'm afraid. I hope the officers that brought you here also contact your family. What was going on in there? Anything we can help with? Did they say why they were doing it? What's going on in there? They just seemed agitated and scared. The woman seems to be in charge. They, they weren't mean, just, just sort of nervous. What did they say? They say why they did it. No, they didn't. I'd like to know, though. Why, why are they doing this? Okay, I need more information. I think we can reason with them. Okay, God, I hope so. Alright. Anything we can help you with? Just help Benny. Benjamin. His name is Benjamin Pile. He's a good man. Not the brightest, but he volunteers as a soccer coach for underprivileged kids and all that. Oh, that's, a, that's an angle we can work with. We know that they have something in common. This Benny and uh, Cassandra. Cassandra? Um... Need to release the hostages, Cassandra? No. Um, Cassandra, this is not like you. Please tell me more about who I am. Um, I have someone here with me, Cassandra. I have Sylvia here with me. There we go. The very soft sigh. The doctor says she'll be fine. She wants to know why you did this to her, why you're doing this to Benny. She's told us what 
told us what's going on in there. She wants you to know the other hostage's name is Benjamin Pillay. Okay, this is it. This is where you should do this. This is the hostage negotiation tactic to make connections. The more you know someone's name and their, you know, I, their personality and their identity as a human, the less likely you may be able to do something bad to them. So if you can get them to say your name, if you can get them to know you personally, um, she wants you to know the other hostage's name is Benjamin Pile, Benny, and he volunteers as a soccer coach. Well, let's not get Benny's blood on my hands or yours. Just bring me that damn helicopter and the money. Um, she wants to know why you've been doing this to her. Well, it's so that the next generation lives better. So that the world is forced to change. Um, systems react quite violently when ex existential threats to their power structures emerge. Is that exactly how fascists justified their abuses? Why did Sylvie and her colleagues deserve what you did to them? They were already victims of the current system. At least this way, they can be made part of the solution. Is that exactly how ju fascists justified their abuse? You know about fascists. You're a uh, poli sci major. No, that's an entirely false equivalence. Is it? Is it, Cassandra? She told us what's been going on in there. Good for her. Good for you. It's not that bad. You were kind to them. We can still work out a deal. It's enough to put you in for life. You're guilty of a dozen charges. It's enough to call the SWAT teams in on you, even if you kill the hostage. It's not that bad. She, she, she can vouch for you. We can work it out. Great. Who is this? Lucas Romano. Oh, he's calling in now? Lucas. Wait a minute. Lucas Romano? How did he get here? Wasn't he... Wait, how did Lucas come out? Did Lucas just run out the door? What the heck? Um, because we never had any indication that Lucas left. We're running out of time, though. Um, was Lippers Front worth what you've done, Lucas? Did the people in there deserve to be made to suffer like that? Lucas, this is not like you. Is it? You need to tell Cassandra to give up, Lucas. Man, all Cassandra needs to do is sit her ass tight over there until you send her that damn helicopter and stop giving her shit. Um, was the Liberation Front worth what you've done, Lucas? Fuck yeah, it's a goddamn fucking tragedy. I couldn't do more. This whole thing makes your movement look like madmen. Was this what you were ordered to do to take hostages and demand things for yourself? Sounds like a betrayal of your so-called ideals. Uh, so I doubt the Front will have your back after this. If Cassandra doesn't give up, she risks dying for the Liberation Front very soon. I know full well what the Liberation Front stands for. No. This doesn't seem like their ideals, Lucas. Man, we did what we had to. Get off my back. This whole thing makes your movement look like madmen. People won't rush to your cause. Man, do I care what people think? Well, you should. Let's not press him on what the Lib Liberation Front uh, stands for. Um, did the people in there deserve to be made to suffer like that? Did we already ask this question? They're just poor pawns of the capitalist oligarchy. It's what happens to willing pawns. Why wouldn't Cassandra put you on the phone when we asked? Did you agree to Sylvia being released? The woman in the other room, Sylvia, she just got married recently. The hostage just still inside is Benny Pile, a volunteer soccer coach. Sylvia wants to know why you did this to her and Belly Benny. Why wouldn't Cassandra put you on the phone? Fuck you, that's my answer. I don't even believe that happened, you manipulative shit. Okay, well, she's not your she's not your partner, uh, Lucas. Did you agree to Sylvia being released? Well, no, it was more Cass's call, really. See, she's she's manipulating you, Lucas. You know, Sylvia, she just got married. The hostage, you know, his name's Benny. And what? Is that supposed to soften me up or what? It was supposed to, honestly, yes. Uh, Sylvia wants to know why you did this to her and Benny. Uh, we're one minute. Hey, I'm sorry for what happened to these people on a personal level, but we're fighting a system bigger than them. A system that has even... that has even them in complete thrall. 
You really need to tell Cassandra to give up? He's not on that, man. Okay, I need to go back to Cassandra. I need I need more time, Cassandra. I have Lucas here with me. He turned in. Be fair to him. We will, I promise, but please, please work with me here. You'll start working with me a lot more if you don't want each of you to quickly disappear to an out-of-country detainment center. Please work with me here. Um, Lucas says you shouldn't give, give us anything more. Help us help him. His case looks a lot better if the story goes that he convinced you to surrender. You get me what I asked for and I'll work with you, copper. If I were to turn in, that's the story we'll be telling. Yeah, Lucas says you shouldn't give us anything more. I won't, yeah. That was probably the bad thing to say. Okay, okay, let's go back. Let's go back. I'm gonna try one more time. You need to turn yourself in, Cassandra. You need to release the hostages? Nope. You need to turn yourself in? All right. Turn in, Cassandra. I still have my hostage. Cassandra, it's over. Let's make sure these people get home safe. Yes! We did something without looking up a walkthrough. With 20 seconds left on the clock. And I had to check to see if I was recording this because if I wasn't, I was going to be very upset. Yeah, yeah, okay, I'm coming out. Don't, uh, don't fucking gun me down. That's it. We did it. Achievement unlocked the veterinary quandary. Interrogation successful. There's Cassandra Higgs back there. Higgs and Romano detained. No victims. Two individuals, Cassandra Higgs and Lucas Romano, suspected of being le linked with the terrorist bombings perpetrated by the group known as the Liberation Front, today attempted to evade capture and initiated a hostage situation. The Peace and Stability Special Unit was tasked with negotiating a safe release as well as a surrender of the two suspects. An intervention squad was ready to rescue the hostages in the event of an unsuccessful negotiation. The special unit already had deep insights into the backgrounds of the perpetrators. Yeah, let's say that. We know all about you guys, so stop what you're doing. Stop lurking in the shadows, because we already know you're there. The suspects, which are young students, are known radicals, have no past criminal record, I mean, let's call them young students. Demanded large sums of money, as well as the means to exit the country. Both of them admitted their allegiance to the Liberation Front during their negotiations and claimed their actions were motivated by radical ideology, religious reasons, monetary ambitions. No, radical ideology. The hostages were unharmed, were severely psychologically traumatized, were violently harmed, were unharmed by the suspects and were eventually released and are now under close medical supervision. Cassandra Higgs and Lucas Romano have been incarcerated and are currently being held for further questioning. We strongly believe this development will allow us to end the Liberation Front threat, better understand the Liberation Front's motives, prevent future plots. I think we don't want to promise too much. Moves will help us better understand their motives and that will lead us to further for their uh, being able to to end their operations. We ask anyone that might have information pertaining to the investigation to bring it to the attention of the authorities. Let's send it away. There we go. Things are finally looking up. Yes, they are, Jennifer. Thank you for saying so. Between Ennis, Wilson's testimony, Adams, the details from Novak, and now Higgs and Romano, we're gathering lots of insights and are finally getting the critical mass to tie more of the leads together. We're going to get cracking on proving the cases as many of these suspects are beginning to look like clear-cut Liberation Front members. Well, I mean, we have some, some outright admissions to being. Okay, we can add another trait. Speed Demon. You have more time to interrogate but cannot access files during or before interrogation. The Profiler. You have an exact evaluation in numbers or of how fearful and empathetic the suspects are. I don't know. I don't know if that's really helpful. That I mean, that sounds good, but it seems like we're doing okay so far. Intimidating presence. We're not. We're not uh, trying to threaten people. We cannot do this because that interacts. That conflicts with our known pacifist. 
We can't do this because we need intimidating presence, which we aren't getting. Unstable genius. You're not all there, but the parts that all are always come back with brilliant ideas. It's been statistically shown that sociopaths do not have greater intelligence. Listen to the numbers, for they sing the truth. That one's kind of weird. I don't know what that is. That like uh like wild wasteland or something from from Fallout that you get some weird options. Good host. You can treat your interrogation subjects really well when you want to. Check the bottom drawer during interrogation so we can get our people drunk. I don't know about that. Nerves of steel. Your psyche holds up well when faced with traumatic events. Right now our psyche doesn't seem to be a problem. All aboard. So we can waterboard people, but we can't take that. Because we don't have intimidating presence. Max brutality. Requires scholar of anatomy. So this is all about... Um, intimidating people or really working them over. So, I mean, I hate to say it, but I guess we pick Profiler. It's the, I mean, it's an, it's, it should be a benefit, but I don't know how much more, but let's, let's pick Profiler. I wonder how many more we get. And because we picked Profiler, do we get something that branches off that path now? All right, let's see. Do we know? Yes, we know what they're good for. Yeah, we know what they're good for. Um, no, we know what they're good at, is what I mean to say. So, we need to recruit an informer. Consult a senior officer. Well, we know Tab is feeling pretty bad right now, right? Tab um, has pretty low motivation. So, honestly, Tab, look at you. you. You have pretty low chances of doing anything. Just go home early, Tab. Just go home. Take the time. Take your time off. Um, Jennifer, I need you to consult a senior officer and attempt to enlist his aid. Ward, he headed a department similar to yours several decades ago. Oh, that could be nice if we could get a consultant on board. Recruit an informer. Consult an academic. Let's go for senior officer we need somebody that knows what they're doing maybe let's see if we can get joseph ward on board to help us out with this uh task force and mordecai you're best at consulting an academic i mean it's only a 60 percent chance um but 60 percent is better than 50 50 so you do that i'm gonna need another hr report um Let's do some team building activities. Past service bonus awards a bonus for the honorable past service of the senior officer you'll be approaching on the consult. Yeah, so give that. Maybe we can butter him up a little bit. It's only 500. Um, I think we do a little bit of therapy to make our people feel a little better. It's down to 1500. Um, I don't want to assign overtime to the agents, honestly. Let's, let's continue. Tristan Miller. Mayor Patel has kindly asked that you speak to another reporter, and Chief Anderson has signed off on it too. This is Patricia Becker, perhaps the city's most respected journalist. Good day, officer. Good day, Patricia. Thank you for, for coming. Excuse me. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I should have called you Miss Becker. We're not at that level where I know you well enough to speak to you by on a first-name basis. I apologize, Miss Becker. Tristan, you're too kind. I just wanted to assure you, officer, that this interview will be fair and open. When they say it's going to be fair and open, the interview is not fair and open. No, fuck this. I'm not talking to the press. My department actions speak for themselves. Oh, fine. Let's get this over with. Don't take too long. I have actual work to do. I'll be happy, Miss Becker. This way. Please come into my office. There you go. There you go. Hello, Miss Becker. The recent attacks have taken a great toll on the community. What's your message to those that have lost loved ones in the explosions? I assure them we will not rest until all these criminals are put behind bars. I deeply apologize. It is our fault that we were unable to act in time to prevent this tragedy. We will redouble our efforts. We were all affected. Dismantling the front must be a common effort, and I would ask the public to report any suspicious activity 
Only constant vigilance will prevent such tragedies in the future. There you go. See something, say something. Can't tell what kind of face that is. The authorities seem to always be one step behind the front. Who do you blame for that? We've discovered many of their plots, neutralized many of their members. We're getting closer to ending them once and for all. We have clearly underestimated them, and we have been slow to react or to act. We can only work as fast as the procedures allow us. No, we're doing a good job, Miss Becker. You just don't understand because we aren't displaying all that information to the public. Are you now? The front seems to be well funded and coordinated. Who do you suspect is supporting them? I suspect hostile foreign states are bankrolling them. I suspect they have been plotting in secret for a long time on a national level. I can't comment on that. You've talked to many front members. How would you describe them? They are traitors and murderers. Most of them are mentally unstable. Most of them are just misguided or have been manipulated. Their leaders are the true devils here. They are regular people, most of them. Just very angry. Um... They're misguided or have been manipulated. I think that's true. They've just been manipulated into something. She didn't even give me a reaction. What do you think attracts these people to the front? These are violent people who would join any cause that would allow them to cause mayhem. I believe the front echoes their own ideology or beliefs in a way no other cause does. Nothing. The front uses threats and blackmail to get people to do its dirty work. No. It's... They're, they're just manipulating people. They're taking, you know people's inherent beliefs and they're somehow manipulating them and using them for this cause that they otherwise wouldn't sign up for. You successfully handed a hostage negotiation. Well, thank you. But thank you, Miss Becker. Uh, thank you for recognizing that. Does this mean that Liberation Front is willing to negotiate? No, we should not start from that premise. They are an enemy that does not seek compromise. Individual members might but I doubt their leaders are willing to accept anything but a total victory. Yes, I believe so. They seek change and might be willing to compromise. I, mean, I don't think the leaders are. Individual members might, though. Worrisome. We still haven't received any public demands. What is the front after? They're robbers. Money and resource accumulation is their actual end goal. We cannot say at this time. We will have to wait and see. They're anarchists rejecting any authority or government. Protesters have argued that your imprisonment of priest Gabriel Adams is just the government finding scapegoats to hide its inability to stop the front. Comments? I invite these people to read his signed confession. Priest or not, evil can hide anywhere. He is guilty and that's all we should look at. We, well, we can't say he's guilty unless he's been proven in a court of law to be guilty. Even if he's signed a confession, I think he still has his day in front of the judge to, to say, I'm guilty. These protesters are nothing but front sympathizers. I invite them to read his signed confession, which we in no way uh, tortured or manipulated him to get get his confession out. Why has the press not been allowed to talk with the convicted Liberation Front members? We have released press statements describing our findings on a regular basis. We do not wish to give these people a, a platform to spread their dangerous ideas because they're imprisoned, charged with terrorism. They're dangerous people. Let's not forget that. Um, I mean, yeah, they're, they're in prison. Do you go around talking to all prisoners? Hard to forget. Yeah, it's hard to forget that they're terrorists. Do you believe this movement is a national, even a global one? Absolutely, this is what makes them dangerous. No, I believe we must work hard to contain them now before the idea spread. In this day and age, any movement is global. That doesn't matter to us in any way. There, that's it. I mean, anything that's on the internet is instantly a global activity so global movement a global uh organization do you agree with those saying that the authorities should be allowed to use enhanced interrogation techniques have you looked at my stats i'm a pacifist ma'am yes this would allow us to act faster preventing other tragedies no we must maintain our principles it's not my place to say i follow the procedures i don't make them this is for a reason we must maintain our principles or else we are no better than them. Finally, what would you say to those that sympathize with the front's message? Blood is on your hands, remember that? Just as a politician might lie to you, so does the front. Do not be deceived. Your anger is justified, but history has proven that violence is never a right answer. There you go. There you go. I mean, you have a right to feel what you want to feel, but you cannot lash out in anger and, uh, and 
and hurt people, so violence is not the right answer. Noted. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Miss Becker. Hello, Tab. Did you have a nice time off? If I may briefly interrupt you with a social matter, really, Tab, why aren't you home sleeping? The team is partaking in a socializing at Hannigan's tonight. Would you like to join us? Um, I have to go to this media training. It's all about how you talk to the press. Have fun. Sure, I'll see you there. I'm coming. I set it up, right? Later that night. At Hannigan's Pub. Mayor Patel is just way too hot. She has to be the kiss. Oh, God. You cannot use local politicians in your kiss, marry, whatever the kiss, marry, kill, or whatever you're, you're talking about. I'm confident in picking her for Mary. So you're killing Damascus Reed? Why not Mary instead into all that startup millionaire money? Oh, I'm sure he remains in the guild category. Boss, you go, and since we're doing people in high places, kiss, marry, kill. Chief Anderson, Patricia Becker, with their heraldic, nice. And Tristan, that guy from City Hall, who's it gonna be? We got to answer this? Come on, that's not very fair. We cannot use real people that we know and say we're gonna kill them. That's not proper. Who's it gonna be? Hmm, I'll be kissing Chief Anderson aggressively. I have to kiss Patricia Becker. She's a fit lady. Or kissing Tristan. He's a fine gentleman. Um. I, this is a bad response because I was. I'm tempted to say I'll kiss Patricia. Um. Because playing this from a, you know, cis hetero male perspective. Um, that sounds like the right option, but and then I would also get to marry Patricia Becker if I don't choose this. Um, so really the answer is, who do I want to kill? And I probably want to kill the, the guy from City Hall. So I'm going to be kissing Chief Anderson. Aggressively, apparently. Yeah, you like that. I see. Yeah, laugh it up, buddy. Laugh it up. I'll marry Patricia Becker, maybe improve our press coverage, or marry Tristan, that boy has a bright political future. And unfortunately, kill Tristan by elimination of the other options. There you go. Oh, that bigger table is cleared. Let's move over. Hey guys, did we have fun at the bar? We've narrowed down a list of four perps that are certainly, or virtually certain, LF members. The evidence is overwhelming. Benno Wise, then Anton Drasco, Linda Bailey, and Helene Kofus. Oh, we've talked about Helene Kofus before. Each one of the last three is linked to one of the attempted bombings. The prosecutors agreed we can book them in on the face value of the evidence alone, so get ready to question. Well, can we see how we did? Success, success, success. All right, we did great. Ooh, popularity went down. Why did popularity go down? Because... Because we weren't, like, aggressively saying that we were going to protect them. Press approval went up. Authority approval went up. Why did popularity go down? I wish I had more information about why. What What did I choose that went down? That made it go down? Joseph Ford has agreed to come in and speak to you. That's good. That's the senior officer. Professor Olaru has agreed to come in and speak with you. That's the academic. And Tab went home, but reportedly couldn't stop thinking about the case. Your HR report is ready. Files are declassified. Tab is still motivation low. Tab, what can we do to help you out? This subject is demotivated, unconfident, tired, and disengaged. They will remain inefficient until rest and engagement are increased. I mean, didn't we give you rest? We sent you home. We have this fourth person. Is that uh, the guy that we wanted to bring in? What's his face? The, uh... Joseph? Alright, we'll probably... Let's click through until we get to the, uh... Option to take people in. And then we'll end the episode. Who is the Liberation Front? Well, let's, let's check this out first. By Patricia Becker. 
Who is Lady Luck? Hold on. Hold on. This is actually maybe important. Um, because we saw Lady Luck over here on the detective wall. A pseudonym under which high-ranking Federation or Liberation Front member released a public statement. So this is actually important to check out. Um, the double bombing attack was we suffered here in the city. Uh, was it like wasn't it like a triple bombing attack? Honestly, um, Los Angeles being stricken by a hour, one hour blackout with all power systems off. The sabotage power plant explosion in Texas that killed five. Even the Vienna Museum bombing that saw the death of several uh, of another seven. And the Cape Town Central Business District attack that resulted only in hospitalizations. Uh, it's been a year since the, the organization known as the Liberation Front has become present with actions as the above rumored to be linked to them and we know so little about who they are. Unverified rumors present... Uh, present conflicting narratives of the terrorist organization's origins. Some speak of a cabal of disenfranchised KGB, Mossad, MI6, and CIA top operatives. Another source cites a breakaway activist wing of anonymous move mobilizing for a greater impact. In circles open to conspiracy theories, it is given that the Liberation Front is a bogeyman created by the UN or some sort of Illuminati to keep the global population scared and in the thrall of the state. Regardless, it is almost certain that they have massive access to insider uh, security procedures, having been able to evade authorities around the world. None of their leadership has been identified. Um, whenever they have been successfully tracked, operations have been abandoned before intervention was even possible. A few of the ranks have always or have been captured. Were always low-level agents kept on a need-to-know basis. Yet despite having a track record of horror and death rivaling some of history's most impactful terror groups, the Liberation Front has issued a pump, issued no public demands. It seems to be a rather key point of their program, reportedly attacking anyone from U.S. civilian targets to ISIS military, that they will not be satisfied by any political objective, and therein lies their greatest strength, their greatest weakness, and the most fearsome aspect of their reign. And in Early capture of one of their puppet agents did reveal what seems to be a statement from what can be assumed to be their leadership. We hear at the Heraldic, or it should be at the Heraldic. Let's go with Heraldic. It sounds sounds better on my tongue. Um, have long debated whether to release this material. The suspect, F.E., had it printed out in simple font on a standard sheet of paper. We are publishing it while urging due caution both... Uh, to the fact that it is of unknown or unverified origin, as well as the fact that it is the propaganda of a murderous group of mass killers. We strike back. We strike back against all oppressors who go unchallenged. We will not judge whether you are right or wrong. We will only strike back. Whenever you want to push your way upon others, we will strike back. We will strike back against the state's laws, and we will strike back against the corporation's dominance. We will strike back against those that made it happen, and we will strike back against those who let it happen. We will strike back both for the women prevented to have an abortion and for the conservatives forced to pay for state abortions. So, you're both for and against abortion. Um, and you're both going to not judge if people are right or wrong, you're just going to strike back. Not, not a very uh, cohesive... Uh, I ideology here um, we will strike back both for the Muslims haunted by prejudice and for the families of those killed by Muslim extremists we will strike back both for the weak and for the powerful being used by the masses we will strike back both for the oppressed by religion and for those who God's, whose God is being attacked we will strike back against any and all who would abuse another in the end, we will strike back against ourselves. No kings, no destinies, strike back. So, you seem to be highly libertar libertarian. You're like, everyone can do whatever they want. You can have an abortion, you can not have an abortion, but you can't be forced to do something. Um, you can... You can be Muslim, but you can't... 
can't be a Muslim. It's like it's 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 very weird ideology, honestly. Um, do they seek pure anarchy? Are their true motives hidden? How can they? How can an entity that employs world-class expertise and can obviously mobilize massive resources fall prey to such teenage extremism? Who is Lady Luck? The intelligence service seems incapable of finding answers. And perhaps most importantly, where will the next attack be? Patricia Becker, uh, she's been working for 12 years, blah, 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 blah. So this was from a suspect called F.E. Have we run into anyone called F.E.? Fred? Fred Ennis. Yeah. It's got to be him. F.E. You were, uh... You were Horn Bunny, huh? Horn Bunny 49? Forgot about Horn Bunny 49, to be honest with you. Alright, let's let's continue on so we can end the episode. Chief, someone's here to see you. This is Joseph Ward. More than two decades ago, he led a team, sorta of like ours, against the Burgundy Riots. Hello, hello Joseph. Meeting room's ready for you. Mr. Ward, it's an honor to speak with someone as experienced as you. Good you're here. I have some quick questions. You were recommended to me. Can't say I understand why. Uh, so an honor to speak with you, Mr. Ward. They look straight into your eyes. Don't sugarcoat things. Tell me what this is all about. All right. I asked you here because I need some operational advice. I asked you here because I need to understand what we're dealing with. I asked you here because I can't trust anyone in this office. Um, I need some operational advice. Or I need to understand. Well, I guess I already clicked on it. Whoops. <laughs> um, oh, really? And what made you think of me? You put in the hours defending people from a threat they didn't even understand. You successfully organized and managed an anti-terrorism squad. You've dealt with these sort of people before. You know how they think. Or you put in the hours. You did the work. You know about that? Hardly anyone remembers. It was ages ago. Tell me about the Burgundy Riots operation you led. What are your thoughts on the Liberation Front? On what do you think we should focus our efforts? I'd like you to join my team. Thank you for having the time to meet with me. Have a nice day. Hopefully we can select more of these. Tell me about the Burgundy Riots. There was a lot of anger in those times. People just couldn't sit and talk anymore. Everyone was so divided. Um, what was their motivation? At first they were angry at the government, but soon things spiraled out of control and groups with all kinds of extreme political agendas got involved. Alright, how did you approach it? We had to differentiate between regular protesters and extremists. We didn't let the terrorists blend in with the crowds or manipulate their anger. That's that's very wise words. How did you catch their leadership? Uh, when we uncovered what they were planning, we used that information to convince their underlings to rat them out. Most of them didn't want anything to do with actual terrorism. That's understandable. That's what we've kind of the angle we've been running with here. What are your thoughts on the Liberation Front? I think it's just that a front. A nice cover under which someone does their work. Okay, you're right. Most of the suspects I've spoken with have been manipulated into helping the front. You're wrong. I've spoken with members that truly believe in the front's agenda. That doesn't matter, though. What matters is they're capable of violent action. I mean, I think you're right. They've been manipulated. Cut the head off the snake. All the others will calm down. What do you think we should focus on? Explosives, weapons. The front didn't just build all these networks. They're working with established criminals. And these criminals don't have loyalty to any ideology. Alright. Um, I'd like you to join my team. I've been happy in retirement. Away from all the stress. Bullshit. You're itching to get back and you know it. You, you have a duty towards the people. We need all the help we can get. Keeping your head down. Waiting for the storm to pass. I didn't take you for a coward. Let's, let's press the man's duty. You have a duty to help people. I don't know if I've still got what it takes for another rodeo. Then you give what you don't have. I don't care. We need to stop the front. I don't need you on the field, Ward. I need you to advise and counsel me. You're right. I don't need someone holding us back. Yeah, you don't need to be out there busting chops. I can do that. As long as you don't make me chase suspects around. That's right. All right, let's get to work. Okay, boss, show me around. I wonder if they still have my old gun. All right, we got the fourth member of the team. Done here. Well, really the fifth member of the team because we're on the team. Um, 
But Dr. Olaru is in the meeting room for you. Maybe she can give us a lowdown on how the front actually thinks. So sorry this is running a little long. Um, wasn't expecting to go through all these extra things. Hello, Dr. Olaru. Thank you for agreeing to aid us. Hi. I mean, I don't know if she's agreed to aid us. My agents tell me that you know stuff about the Liberation Front. Honestly, I think this is a waste of time, but let's get this over with. Greetings, Dr. Olaru. I must say it is quite an honor to meet you. Your piece on the entering of ecocentric ideals into the mainstream is one of my favorite articles in the last decade. Oh, that's just buttering up. She's not going to believe that. Hello. Thank you for agreeing to aid us. Don't worry, sweetheart. Please tell me. What do you want us to talk about? Let's talk about your background. Let's talk about the ideology. Let's talk about how they can be defeated. It's clear you're a Liberation Front member. Turn yourself in. Oh god, let's, let's not accidentally click that one. You keep on not responding clearly to some of my questions. Here we call that obstruction of justice. Oh, so she's not gonna she's not gonna play nice, huh? Miss Laura, thank you for your time. Now, if you excuse me, I have some terrorists to catch. Let's talk about your background. Oh my. Crunchy smile. If I knew this would be a date, I would have put on some better clothes. Um crunchy smile ma'am oh kind of weird uh internet lingo you talking you seem pretty weird <laughs> yeah yeah she does but i don't know if we're gonna call it out why'd you decide to go into academic life what do you believe in who's your favorite writer i understand you teach meta ideological studies you keep giving me nicknames can you please explain why you seem pretty weird what is ideology exactly what do you what did you decide to go Why'd you go into academics? What is a more wonderful thing to do than to corrupt the blank minds of little innocents with an understanding of their own ignorance, as well as the desperation that comes with an insatiable hunger for knowledge? Alright, well, what do you believe in, personally? Good conversations over a cup of coffee. Whatever I see, touch, or hear, and the power of the human mind to believe in what they believe in is actually real. Now do I know you do not believe in the Liberation Front? With your knowledge, you might as well be their lead coordinator. Maybe not ask that one just yet. Who's your favorite writer? Oh my, little honeybee. You're just like my freshman students, you know that? How could I choose between my babies? They're all... They're all wrong and right in their own unique ways, and that's why I love them. Except for Kant. He's just a dick. I don't know who that is, but whatever. Um, I understand you teach meta-ideological studies? What does that mean? Well, I couldn't help it. Um, all my colleagues flaunted their fancy course names and I had to step up my game. I couldn't just say I teach ideology. So dull. That's why I came up with this name. It's wonderfully obtuse, isn't it? Yeah, wonderfully obtuse. Um, can you give me... You keep on giving me nicknames. What, what's that all about? I don't take it personally, Ginger Bomb. I'm just horrible with names. In this world dominated by identifiers with too many syllables, one must evolve or face a terrible social death. What is ideology? Such a wonderful question. Technically, just a coagulated system of normative axioms and theorems without epistemic function, which forms the basis of a personal or societal policy. Yes, I think that's as good as a one-sentence definition could be. Interesting definition. But I think the relationship between ideology and policy is reversed. Ideology is more of a construct of the subjective, manipulated by the ruling to justify a world order. Interesting definition, but wrong, for it does not describe the particular differences between ideology and religion. Um, let's, let's hit her up with the, the cool, smart. Ideology is more a construction of the subjective. Someone has been reading their Zizek, I see. Well, I guess it comes down to the epistemolog epistemological perspective from which we look at it, right? How do I know you're not a you don't believe in the Liberation Front? Oh, she got mad. Dear, if I would tell you I believe in democracy, human rights, the free market, and the nation state, would that dissolve your suspicions? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Let's talk about the Liberation Front's ideology. Very well, darling. Later on we shall talk about your department's ideology. Let's please not. What's their ideology? I talked to my students the other day about this. It's not a right singular ideology, but rather an umbrella of ideologies with a common anarchist backbone and divided into three branches. Okay. What's the three branches then? Well, darling, it's quite complex. Two of them fall somewhere in the individualistic and collectivistic anarchism spectrum. The third one is a weird mixture with a lot of influences from international relations realism. 
Oh, you, you got me, lady. I have no idea what you're talking about. Let's talk about the collectivist wing. Very well, sugar. Then tell me, what do you know about it? From what I understand, their ideal number world is one in which communities of people live in harmony. From what I understand, their ideal world is one in which natural state of collective living allows you to be free from the chains of individual property. Um, I'm going to go with harmony. Yes and no, sunshine. We all want harmony. Collectivist anarchists just believe that stateless, private, propertyless societies in which the means of production are commonly owned create a structure or a culture of empathy and social duty that allows for even the disenfranchised to prosper. Okay. What would you say is the main argument against collective anarchism? Is there something particular about the Liberation Front's belief in collectivism? Do you have any other works I, you suggest I should read? Were there any other terrorist groups in... Okay, let's, let's go. Let's go just down the list. What would you say is their main argument against what they believe in? Angel, there are many arguments, but only some of them have not already been tackled by propaganda. I can tell you my opinion of what would be the most persuasive for believers of this ideology, but first let's hear what you think. That in a collectivist society, the more charismatic will still be able to gain power by manipulating the collective? That in a collectivist society, people will still be greedy and work for themselves, not the collective? That in a collectivist society, people's individual needs are not respected? Um, let's go on the, uh, the, the, the charismatic leader will get what he wants. Bravo! Yes, darling. For those promised a world without serfdom, the thought of having their utopia destroyed by chains made out of customs and manipulative words is scary. All right, is there anything, any particular belief about the Liberation Fronts? Anything particular about their beliefs? Well, yes, sweetie. It is a left anarchist, and blah, 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 a left anarchistic in, in nature. But other than that, I am certain there is a plethora of different sub-ideological beliefs held by different members. Do um, you have anything I can read up on? Oh, there are many. Bakunin was the first to call for a violent revolution of the of the economically oppressed instigated through terrorism which he called propaganda by the deed then you can read Marx or Kropotkin or so many others alright sure any other terrorist groups like these like this in the past well the more successful ones were collectivists but not anarchists from the Bolshevik revolution uh, there were however a few anarchists that succeeded in holding some territory for a small amount of time such as the Spanish anarchists during the civil war in the 30s all right, sure. God, this is a lot of questions. I'm terribly sorry about these questions. Um, but I'm afraid that there might be something important in them. Um, let's talk about the individualist wing. Very well, cutie pie. Then tell me, what do you know about it? From what I understand, their ideal world is one in which a system based on the rights of self-autonomy and private property maximizes the self-determination of the individual. From what I understand, their ideal world is one in which oppression of the masses is minimized by allowing voluntary participation within social structures. Well, also this, but even today, you can be a hermit in the mountains. They rather believe that an individual needs are best achieved when no other entity restricts their freedom to use their body and property to pursue happiness. Only voluntary, fully consented transactions and agreements are moral. These also drive the economy to further prosperity. Yeah, I've seen some of these people on Facebook. I've seen this argument. What is the main argument against? Well, we've already said that. Um, oh, no, we didn't. We did collectivists. What's the main arguments against the individual? If you want to debate with these people, you must think about the arguments which will be the most persuasive to them, the believers. I see, I can tell you my opinion, but to see what you think. That in such a society, Entities that accumulate massive wealth will gain the power to block competition through de facto regulation. They will clog markets that otherwise work well. That in such a society, the most wealthy will also own all the weaponry, allowing them to oppress everyone. That in such a society, cultural, such a society culturally pushes people to be as greedy as possible. This will limit mankind's ability to grow through cooperation. So massive wealth will block a competition or... The most wealthy will own all the weapons. Let's go for that one. Very interesting. Yes, this, this may or may not work. All right, well, you didn't tell me the answer. Well, sweetheart, the one you said sounds interesting. You're supposed to give me the answer. 
Um, any other terrorist groups like this in the past? Small European movement at the end of the 19th century, which boasted a similar ideology, ideology and mostly conducted assassinations of, politi of politicians. Of course, there's the whole gathering of violent libertarian secessionists in the U.S. All right, we said libertarian. Um, talk to me about the third wing. You said it's a form of anarchism inspired by international relations? Yes, I did, darling. Tell me what you know about it. Nothing. Honestly, nothing. I've only heard about this from you just now. Their ideal world is one in which the real natural freedom is every human of every human being is unrestricted by the artificial international constructs of law. From what I understand, their ideological world ideal world is one in which the natural state of competition and aggression between tri tribal-like communities improves the species. Um, let's let's say there is no such thing as international law. Not only that, the anarchists, anarcho-realists, seem to believe that humans should always struggle for power. And the mainstream ideology grants the ruling class power in exchange for harmful com comfort. Without such, people would organize in small warring communities and in the long term strengthen the species in an evolutionary means. Okay, whatever, lady. I'm getting, I'm getting tired of you right now, honestly. How does the Liberation Front reconcile the ideological differences between its members? How do most couples stay together? By not talking about their issues and by projecting uh, idealized scenarios of how everything will be fine. There's no logic-based reconciliation as much as those 20th century anarchists without object adjectives would like us to believe. So how can we stop them by so we can stop them by making, by making them think about their differences? What is the main incompatibility? So we can stop them by making them think about their differences? Bravo, bravo. They do teach you something at that police academy. Yep, um... So what's the difference between the collectivists and the individualists? Oh god, there's so many freaking talking points. Jeez. Wonderful. I love playing spot the difference. Let's do it this way. You tell me what you think, and I'll tell you if your assumption is correct or not. One depends on the existence of private property. The other depends on it not existing. It's simple. Greed is fostered by the culture of one and subdued by the culture of the other. Monetary policy in an individual society must surely be based on a fractional, probably whatever, um, greed. Well, not really. Any individualist will disagree with the statement that an individual society fosters greed. They would say that it only fosters egoism and that being respected and liked in the community is the egoistic source of altruism. Yeah, whatever. Um, what about the realists and the collectivists? Yeah, you want me to solve my own question. What the heck, lady? Um... The collectivist wing has hum humanist ideological roots, while the other one holds to its ideal. Um, collectivist anarchism doesn't oppose modern living based on mass production, just as private ownership. The realist wing believes in the self-sufficient small communities. Very good, very good. All right, and the difference between the individualists and the realists. Um. The individualist wing opposes any kind of social hierarchy, only supporting economic hierarchy. The realistic wing believes in competing communities that can only survive with clear leadership. Well, I don't think an individualist would allow, would be against ha having leadership in small communities. Whatever, lady. I'm getting real tired of you right now. Um, what's your opinion of them? Well, love, I do have a lot of professional respect for them. They play a great blitz, blitzkrieg that may ultimately cost them the war. And some of the younger, my some of my younger students said, "Say mad balls, bro." Okay, how do they spread? I don't know, sweetheart. It's not me running an investigation on them. I guess the usual methods: keep people who influence the social nodes, and the disgusting usage of subtle media nudges. What do you mean, subtle media nudges? Well, everyone does it, so much that we barely notice it. Do you remember that scandal ab about that tech and social media company Torpix and their manipulation of people's online news recommendations? Um, imagine that just being the tip of the iceberg. What do you mean by key people in influencing their social nodes? Oh, excuse me, Sticky Puff. I sometimes talk in academia gibberish. That's how you get tenure. What I mean is that folks just love agreeing with those that they respect. So if you get some influential people to preach for you, it's easy to spread your message. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So we can call her out and like, you're not answering my questions. Thank you for your time. Very well, it was lovely chatting with you, officer. Get out of here. Wasting my time, lady. Team, I'd like you to meet Dr. Mr. Ward, here to help us despite his retirement. Team, please meet Joseph. He's an old school terrorist squasher here to aid, aid us in crushing the front. Joseph Ward, this is the team. Team, this is Joseph. He'll be joining us to improve our field work. He's not improving our field work, that's all. Um, and, I mean, Mr. Ward, come on. He's part of the team. We don't call each other Mr. Ward anymore. That just makes him seem like an old man. And saying he's retired? No, he's not an old man. He's part of the team now. He's one of us. He's an old school terrorist squasher. Welcome, Joseph. It's great to have some reinforcements. Your resume is quite impressive. Your contributions may be invaluable. Thank you kindly for having me. It's daunting yet thrilling to be back. Well, thank you, Joseph. Only Benny, Benno Weiss, they couldn't get yet. We're sure he's in hiding with his uncle out of state, so it might be a while. But the other three are in. Full-time mom, Linda Bailey, seemed to have handled our security guard, Wilson. Um, I don't know what that you're talking about, lady. Um, uh, Wilson, the guy from the first case. Yeah, okay. So these are their handlers. I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anton Drasco, porn producer, seemed to have provided the explosive for Father Gabriel. And Helene Kufus, a yoga instructor, was very close contact with uh, Cassandra Hicks. Helene is a deaf mute, so we brought in an interpreter for you. Tabs prepped you the case files on them. They're all set up to go in the interrogation rooms. Crazy thing is, they didn't even fight it. They already confessed to being with the front, all three. So the stakes here are whether you can extract from them the next move the Liberation Front will make. Go get them. All right, we're definitely ending the episode here. Sorry it took forever. There was so much extra talking. Um, but we actually completed something, you know, on the first try for once, and it seems like forever. So thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it, and hope to see you again next time.